In 2010, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded, triggering one of the worst environmental disasters in history. Millions of barrels of oil poured into the Gulf of Mexico. But then something baffling happened. Nearly half of it vanished. No surface slicks, no shoreline residue, no deep sea plumes. Just gone. Where did all that oil go and how? Let's explore. In 2010, a serious incident occurred on the Deepwater Horizon oil platform, tragically resulting in the loss of 11 lives and a major spill of approximately 4.9 million barrels of oil and 275,000 tons of natural gas into the Gulf of Mexico over 86 days. The spill affected the open ocean, deep sea ecosystems, and more than 1,200 miles of the Gulf's coastline. It is widely regarded as one of the most significant environmental disasters in United States history. After the platform fire was extinguished, response efforts focused on mitigating the impact. Around half of the oil was recovered through conventional physical and chemical methods. While a portion of the oil was not accounted for and is believed to have dispersed or biodegraded. But what if nature itself had a secret weapon, something invisible, yet incredibly powerful, working quietly beneath the surface? In 2021, scientists conducted important research in the experimental lake areas of western Ontario. The researchers created enclosed zones along the shore of one of the lakes and introduced controlled amounts of crude oil into the water to simulate the effects of an oil spill. After 72 hours, they cleaned the enclosed area to the best of their ability and began observing how the environment responded to the remaining oil. These long-term observations continued throughout the summer and winter. The study revealed that following the simulated spill, the composition of bacterial communities in the soil and water changed significantly. Rare types of bacteria, previously almost undetectable, became dominant. Many of these bacteria were found to possess the ability to break down oil, using it as a food source. The findings suggest that natural ecosystems may have adaptive microbial responses to environmental disturbances. If you were leading the investigation into the missing oil, what would your first move be? Science, politics, or follow the money? Let's talk below. Could this strange bacterial shift be happening in other places too, like the very heart of the disaster zone? Moreover, researchers believe that the ecosystem in the Gulf of Mexico may have had some level of natural resilience to a large-scale spill due to the long-term presence of low-level oil seepage associated with drilling activities, though not in such volumes, of course. This idea is somewhat comparable to how gradual exposure to certain substances can lead to biological adaptation. Scientists have confirmed that in the Gulf of Mexico, there exists a native population of microbes that have adapted to breaking down oil, but likely due to ongoing exposure from high shipping traffic and smaller scale spills. Given the presence of thousands of natural oil seeps in the region, it's understandable why many researchers believe that the microbial communities in the Gulf are particularly suited to responding to oil-related disturbances. So, is the Gulf unique or is the Earth hiding an army of oil-eating microbes in plain sight? Some experts dispute this claim. According to them, the ability to help clean up oil spills exists in ecosystems across the planet. Nature demonstrates a degree of resilience and in many cases it is already responding to small-scale oil releases. Each year, approximately 1.3 million tons of oil enters the environment, much of it through natural seepage. One reason our coastlines are not consistently covered in tar balls is due to the presence of vast numbers of microorganisms capable of breaking down hydrocarbons. These microbes are found in every ocean, from Antarctica to the Arctic. Interestingly, the prevalence of natural oil seepages around the world has helped shape ecosystems where specific bacteria are adapted to degrade oil. These microbes exist in relatively low numbers under normal conditions, carrying out their functions in the marine environment. 
However, when oil, whether from natural sources or human activity, enters the water, they detect the hydrocarbons, move toward the source, and rapidly multiply in response. Can we use these microbes to support cleanup efforts during major anthropogenic oil spills? In large-scale events like the spill in the Gulf of Mexico, the volume of oil can overwhelm the existing microbial populations, allowing oil to reach shorelines and trigger a wide range of ecological challenges. Can we harness this microbial power? Or are we merely observers in a battle we can't control? Before exploring, I have a special 10-second request for all of you listening. If you can help me in any way, just hit the notification bell and hit that subscribe button. It helps this channel so much. And if you do that, I will do everything I can to make this show even better for you. Deal? In cases where the affected area is extensive, natural processes alone may not be sufficient to manage an oil spill, but scientific methods can assist. Two main approaches have been explored. The first is called seeding, the artificial introduction of oil-degrading bacteria into a contaminated area under controlled laboratory conditions. While this method has shown promising results in lab environments, field trials have been more complex. In several cases, the outcomes were inconclusive, and in some instances, no measurable improvement was observed. Moreover, since microbial populations tend to increase naturally in response to oil spills, adding additional bacteria may not significantly enhance the cleanup process. The second approach is known as biostimulation, which involves enhancing the growth of native microbial communities. By adding nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus, scientists were able to accelerate bacterial activity and improve the rate of oil degradation. This technique has yielded more consistently positive results, although the breakdown of oil still takes time, ranging from days to weeks or even months. But even nature's best cleanup crew has its limits. What challenges do these microbes face? Bacteria generally do not act quickly, and scientists have yet to discover a way to significantly accelerate their natural processes. Interestingly, the fact that bacteria are not capable of rapidly breaking down oil may be beneficial. If microorganisms existed that could decompose petroleum-based substances in a matter of hours or days, materials such as asphalt and resin, which are derived from oil, prompt could be at risk of degradation in unintended contexts such as roads and infrastructure. It's also important to understand that oil is composed of many different substances and no single microorganism can break down all of them. Instead, oil degradation is a collaborative process carried out by diverse microbial communities, with different species handling different components of the oil. While that may sound like something out of a storybook, the takeaway is that environmental recovery is a complex, cooperative effort, both among microorganisms and among people working to support them through science and responsible intervention. Since microbes can't do it all alone, how have humans stepped in to support, or sometimes disrupt, this natural process? In the Gulf of Mexico, one of the key responses to the Deepwater Horizon oil spill involved relying on naturally occurring microbes that can break down hydrocarbons. Since scientists couldn't accelerate the microbes' natural processes significantly, they used another method, applying over 800,000 gallons of chemical dispersants to break the oil into smaller droplets, making it easier for bacteria to access and degrade. To explain simply, Hydrocarbons are the main molecular components of crude oil, and certain microbes are capable of metabolizing them as a source of energy for growth and survival. While microbes do not eat oil, they chemically break down hydrocarbons through complex biological processes that have been the subject of significant scientific study. This process may be chemically intricate, but the outcome is clear, microbes convert oil into less harmful substances such as carbon dioxide and water. In oil-contaminated soil, introducing microbial enzymes can support this natural biodegradation process, leaving behind non-toxic byproducts. Chemical dispersants seem helpful, but are they doing more harm than good? 
What can we do to address oil spills? Currently, only about 15 to 25 percent of spilled oil can be effectively removed through mechanical means. This has been true for major disasters like the Exxon Valdez spill in Prince William Sound, Alaska, and the Deepwater Horizon spill in the Gulf of Mexico. During the latter, cleanup crews employed several methods, recovering oil from the water surface, using in situ burning, and applying chemical dispersants to break oil into smaller droplets. Dispersants are often used early in cleanup efforts, helping to disperse oil into deeper waters. However, these chemicals can be highly toxic to marine life, including beneficial microbes that naturally degrade oil. Because of this, scientists are working to develop safer alternatives that support microbial activity rather than inhibit it. In addition to dispersants, barriers are used to contain oil spills, but these can fail under rough sea and wind conditions. Other conventional methods, such as removing oil from soil or cleaning industrial sites and pipelines, are complex and often shift the problem elsewhere. Contaminated soil, for example, does not break down oil on its own. Chemicals used in cleanup can also leave behind harmful byproducts. When mixed with partially degraded oil, the resulting compounds may be even more toxic, posing serious threats to sensitive ecosystems like coral reefs. Many current cleanup techniques are only partially effective. In most cases, a significant amount of oil remains in the water, continuing to cause environmental harm. Bacteria, however, offer a promising natural alternative. These microbes can break down oil in both soil and water, but their use must be carefully managed. There is ongoing research into bioaugmentation, enhancing microbial populations to improve cleanup. However, scientists also note that in certain environments, such as near oil refineries, unchecked microbial growth could interfere with operations by clogging pipelines. Responsible implementation is essential to ensure that microbial solutions enhance, rather than disrupt, oil spill management. Surprisingly, some deep-sea creatures have turned oil into a lifeline. How is that even possible? To support cleanup, it's important to maintain the right balance of microbes, enough to process contaminants without causing unintended effects. Interestingly, some deep-sea animals have developed symbiotic relationships with these oil-degrading microbes. Not long ago, scientists from Germany and the United States discovered such organisms living deep in the Gulf of Mexico. In these deep waters, around 9,800 feet down, oil and tar naturally seep from the ocean floor, forming unusual structures that resemble cooled lava, known as asphalt volcanoes. Around them, a unique ecosystem thrives, including mussels, crabs, worms, sponges, and other deep-sea creatures. Despite the presence of oil, these animals survive in environments with very limited food sources. This is where microbes play a vital role. Living inside these animals, the microbes break down oil into usable energy and carbon, forming a classic symbiotic relationship where both organisms benefit. These internal microbes are genetically distinct from their free-living counterparts, suggesting a long-evolved adaptation rather than a recent response to pollution. We dive deep into real stories like this, where nature, industry, and mystery collide. So if that's your thing, subscribe and come beneath the surface with us. Nature's solutions are impressive, but can science take things even further? In scientific terms, this process is called bioremediation, the use of living organisms to break down environmental pollutants. It's not only bacteria that contribute, various other organisms can also be used. For example, certain fungi from the Aspergillus genus have shown the ability to grow in oil-contaminated environments. In controlled settings, these fungi can break down components of motor oil into less harmful substances. These fungi, which include hundreds of species found in diverse climates worldwide, have potential in oil spill cleanup efforts. There are also organisms like specific worms that are associated with plastic degradation. In reality, it's the bacteria inside them that do the work. 
In 2016, Japanese researchers discovered a bacterium called Idenella sakiensis in plastic waste that can break down polyethylene terephthalate, a common plastic used in bottles. Remarkably, this bacterium can degrade a plastic bottle in under 24 hours, compared to the hundreds of years it typically takes for such plastic to break down naturally. While it's not practical to release bacteria directly into the ocean to manage plastic pollution, studying them can help develop safer, more efficient recycling processes. Overall, bioremediation offers a more eco-friendly alternative to many industrial cleanup methods. Scientists continue to explore how fungi and microbes can be modified to improve their efficiency. For decades, genetic research has aimed to enhance the oil-degrading abilities of microbes. While earlier studies suggested natural microbes were more effective, advancements have been made. As of 2022, researchers have developed new bioproducts based on oil-degrading microbes to support marine cleanup. A laboratory at the Faculty of Natural Sciences at Bangkok University has created three such products, a liquid microbial solution for soil, granules for use in sand, and a separate formula for water purification. But wait, what if our solutions come with unexpected costs, even underwater? As with many environmental interventions, side effects can occur. Microbial communities around sunken ships in the Gulf of Mexico changed significantly after the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in 2010. These shifts in microorganisms, particularly those living on or near historically important shipwrecks, may pose risks to both marine ecosystems and the preservation of submerged cultural heritage. There are more than 2,000 documented shipwrecks on the seafloor, some over 500 years old. These wrecks often act as artificial reefs, supporting diverse deep sea life. However, the oil spill caused some of the oil and microbial populations to settle at the bottom in unusually high concentrations. Such sudden imbalances in microbial communities can have lasting ecological effects, including the potential acceleration of steel corrosion in shipwrecks. This may threaten both marine biodiversity and the structural integrity of historical vessels. Interestingly, researchers have identified another factor that may have aided in the cleanup sunlight. Studies suggest that photodissolution, a process triggered by solar exposure, could have broken down between 3 and 17 percent of the oil that remained on the ocean's surface. This natural process contributed to oil degradation before mechanical or microbial methods could take effect. Do you think nature cleaned up the mess? Or is there more to this story than we've been told? Drop your theory in the comments, I read every one. If you found today's video interesting, don't hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Your support is very important to us. Be sure to check out the next video appearing on your screen. You're sure to love the content we bring. Please leave a comment about which country you'd like us to explore next. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Thanks for being with us. Leave a comment, like to show your support, and remember to hit that subscribe button for more exciting videos. See you next time.